Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. All right, here we go. Let's get started into ophthalmic optics. So the first thing I want to do here is just assuming that most students here will not have had a tremendous amount of exposure to this kind of concept. I want to go over some simple optical concepts that are going to kind of set the plate here for all the different things we're going to learn. So, uh, you know, this is kind of like the basics of optics. We're not gonna get into any of the math or any of that stuff. We're actually gonna be going through a lot of things in this course. This is gonna be a big one, a big module that's going to basically cover all the major stuff that we need to know as opticians. The math, the way the light works, the way the eye processes light. Uh, this is like, this is the, the, the main stuff that we need to know as opticians. But, before we get into all this stuff, I just, there's a few concepts that I want us to kind of have under our belt so that, you know, when we start talking about some of these, you know, more detailed things that we understand the little concepts that go behind it. All right. So this is going to be kind of just like a precursor to all the more important concepts throughout this module. All right. So first, let's go through a few things. All right. First thing, ophthalmic optics. Well, ophthalmic optics refers to the optics of the eye and lenses. Now, in our case, uh, you know, that's specifically what we do as opticians. We have to understand how the eye processes light, and we also have to understand how lenses alter the path of light in order to correct vision. In a nutshell, that's what an optician does. Now, in the last module, I talked about how important understanding ocular anatomy is. And that is for the same reason why ophthalmic optics is super important, because in anatomy, we need to know how the eye works so that we can understand what a normal eye looks like and so that it can do all of its functions. And ultimately, its main function is to process light. So this part of the course where we look at optics is the business end here where this healthy eye, or even if it's not healthy, the eye itself is processing light, contributing to the visual process, and we can now understand what normal looks like as far as processing light properly and giving proper vision, and then what refractive error and all the other problems that come with, you know, different deficiencies, how the optics work behind those principles, and how lenses operate to correct those problems. Now, I want you to think of refraction as being our game, right? Converging light onto the retina. Refraction is a huge part of what we do. The eye refracts light to the retina and lenses help refract light to the retina as well. So we're gonna go into detail about normal vision, about refractive error and what the lenses do. But a basic, basic principle here is we deal with refraction. All right, so that's the bending of light or converging of light, in, in, as we'll discuss in a little bit more detail. Now, the eye is a series of refractive components, just like lenses, or one way I like to refer to it, which we are gonna refer to it uh, in the course, is, is just like a camera, all right? So cameras are a series of lenses, and actually, uh, very interestingly, and I'm gonna do a little bit of a schematic on that so you can see exactly how it all works. Uh, the traditional camera works exactly the same way as the eye. It's actually pretty uncanny on how similar the camera and the eye are. So if you think of the eye as a series of lenses with a specific purpose, uh, it's very, very easy to kind of understand how this all works and, and uh, how certain deficiencies are going to contribute to certain refractive problems. All right. So I just want you to remember the eye, even though it's an organ, it's, 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 uh, you know, it's all tissue. It's basically just a series of refractive components or lenses that achieve a certain end goal. Right. Uh, now, ophthalmic lenses are used to correct refractive error, myopia, hyperopia, astigmatism, and presbyopia, etc. 
Uh, obviously, we're going to go into much more detail in every single one of these things. However, you know, and this is something you probably can already kind of gather on your own. But yeah, the lenses that we use correct the deficiencies in the optics of the eye. Now, refractive power of lenses or the eye, that's measured in a unit called diopters. Now, I want you to really pause on the idea of diopters because like from this moment forward, every unit of measure, unless otherwise uh, you know, specified, every, every unit of power is the diopter. So if you're new to optics, you might be new to the concept of the diopter. That is a unit of measure specific to power. And let's elaborate on that a little bit. The diopter is the amount of power required to bring light to a point from a specific distance. So that's related to the focal length. All right. So uh, there's a number of ways you could define the diopter. And this is the simplest way that I could kind of gather because at the end of the day, that's what we deal with. We deal with the vergence of light. Okay, so I'm gonna write that down, vergence. Um, and we're gonna have a whole lecture on vergences. However, the diopter, the power, the unit of power required to bring point, parallel rays of light to a point, okay, right here, uh, that is the diopter. So depending on the distance of the object that we're looking at, uh, or the object from the lens or from the lens system, the amount of power required to converge that is considered the diopter. Now, we're going to also talk about divergence because negative diopters can actually diverge light, and we're going to go into more detail. But for the time being, I want you to think of the diopter as units of power for converging light. All right? This is the most important concept that you need to know about the diopter, and we're going to be dealing with diopters all the time. All right? Let's move. So as far as vision correction goes, uh, blurry vision, right? We deal with blurry vision all the time in our line of work, usually will involve one of two things. It's usually due to pathology or to refractive error. Now in the last module, we talked about pathology and how a healthy eye, how you know for normal vision, we require a healthy eye. Everything outside of pathology usually refers to refractive error and that's optics in a nutshell. Basically, the refractive components of the eye not amounting to what they need to uh, in order to give proper vision. Everything outside, everything outside of normal would be refractive error in this case. And we're going to go into lots of detail about refractive error. Now, manifest refraction, MR, okay, that's the determination of refractive error. When the patient goes for an eye exam, now the optometrist or ophthalmologist, they're going to be doing a series of tests. A lot of these tests involve proper health and function of the different components of the eye like we talked about in the last module. However, another big part is this, is the manifest refraction. Okay, so that's when the person sits behind the foropter, all right, so that's the machine with a whole bunch of lenses in it, and the series of lenses is used to determine the amount of refractive error and the amount of power required to correct vision. So I just want you to remember that the manifest refraction is used in order to determine refractive error. All right, and then what's the result of this? Well, this the result of this is the Rx, the prescription, right? And that prescription is what we use to correct vision, right? So that's just based the basic premise here. Uh, when, when a patient comes into your office, usually they'll have a prescription in hand. They have just had a manifest refraction that determines the amount of refractive error and what we need to do to correct it. Now, refractive error is corrected with, well, Spectacle lenses, right, and eyeglasses. That's going to be a huge one that we deal with. Can also be done with contact lenses, which we're also going to cover in a future module. And refractive surgery, LASIK, PRK, uh, clear lens exchange, all different types of surgeries that can be used to correct refractive error, which is actually very similar to contact lenses or spectacle lenses, just backwards. It's you know used either. Uh, through surgery on the cornea or done by imp the implantation of different lenses inside the eye. Uh, and there's a number of different ways we could correct vision as well, uh, both surgically and with different apparatus. However, the main ones for us and our job is going to be spectacle lenses and for some of you, contact lenses. All right, so that's the main way we use to correct refractive error and that's essentially what being an optician is all about. Now, I wanted to just touch on types of lenses. Of course, we're gonna go into a lot of detail about this kind of stuff, especially in the module of all products. However, <clears throat> in order to be able to fully grasp all the concepts in this module, I just wanted you to have 
the very basics of lenses. And we're going to elaborate on this stuff as well. So single vision, right? So if a person has a simple problem of just having issues with distance vision or near vision, they would usually be prescribed a single vision lens. And there's different types of single vision lenses. In this case, this lens is a what we call a spherical lens. Okay, so a spherical lens has the same power everywhere. So these arrows denote different meridians. Usually we have two meridians of a lens. Again, we're going to discuss this in detail. However, the entire surface power of this lens is all plus two. So no matter which part of the lens, which, which direction you look through the lens here or here, it's all plus two. Another type of single vision lens is uh, a toric lens or a spherocylinder. cylinder. So same concept used to, to correct one focal distance. However, uh, there's, different, there's different powers along different meridians. So in this case, uh, this horizontal line would be the 180 degree meridian and the vertical line here would be the 90 degree meridian. Notice along this axis, it's a plus three and over this axis, it's a plus two. All right, so if, and the reality is, is that the vast majority of lenses that we use actually fall in this category. Uh, a lot of spherical ones as well, but it's very, very common to have toric lenses. And this is used to correct people with astigmatism, which again, we are going to go into lots of detail about astigmatism and how that's corrected. So just, just background information, these are the types of lenses that we're going to be discussing when we go into uh, more detail on everything, all right? Now, those are single vision lenses. However, there's also multifocal lenses. And I mean, most of you have all seen these. So this is a bifocal lens. Uh, and this is used when a person needs correction on more than one focal length, right? So this part is the distance part, right? Distance. And then the, the segment here takes care of the near. And we usually refer to this as the addition. Uh, however, just for you know background information, this is what a bifocal looks like. And it's, again, used to correct multiple focal lengths. And usually, uh, and it's not exclusively, but usually this is used to correct a condition called presbyopia, which is extremely common and usually happens to people after 40 years old. And again, we're gonna go through with this in lots of detail. I just want you to be familiar with these products. And then the other type of multifocal that you'll see sometimes is the trifocal. And this is designed to correct distance, near and intermediate, because as we're gonna learn throughout these studies of optics is that every single focal distance requires a different focal power. So our lifestyles typically involve more than just far and close they are they also involve everything in between as well so the trifocal is used to correct that intermediate area as well now truth be told the trifocal was popular you know years and years ago probably about 20 to 30 years ago however uh it's fallen out of favor over the years because it is very difficult to use there's a lot going on here right this is a busy surface so even though it's not super common uh, it's still used and you know some some elderly patients who have gotten used to using this may still use it so uh, it's something we will still discuss however this is again to understand the concept that different products are used to correct different issues right now and the third way of correcting and there's actually a number of different types of uh, progressive lenses which is what we're showing here so I'm going to use the acronym PAL very often because it's easier in writing progressive and this refers to progressive addition lens now there are numbers of of different types of progressive addition lenses which we will discuss uh, but this is the main way of correcting multiple focal lengths nowadays all right so in a progressive lens it's actually a molded surface or well the old style or old the the, the more traditional progressive lenses are molded front surfaces we'll talk about how modern progressives are made as well however uh this takes care of just about everything a person could need in the multifocal range right so you have distance you have intermediate you have near and the value of a progressive is a that it's very aesthetic because it doesn't have all these ugly lines on it just like a trifocal or a bifocal and as well uh this intermediate zone is progressive right so the power changes along what we call the corridor here get, getting closer and closer to the total near power and this allows a person to be able to see uh, multiple focal lengths well uh, as long as they can use the product properly and aim it properly but this was a huge innovation <clears throat> years ago 
that allow people to no longer have to really aim the way they did with the traditional segmented multifocals and gives them the ability to uh, see in all realms, right? So again, we're gonna go into lots of detail on all of these things. However, now you have a bit of an idea of the different types of products, at least product categories that are used to correct refractive error, okay? Now, uh, the vision prescription, right? So we're gonna be talking prescription a lot and we're gonna go into detail about that as well. However, if you see the word RX, all right, that refers to the prescription, the vision prescription. We don't deal with a whole lot of medication prescriptions, right? Actually, for most of us, none of them. So whenever we see the word RX, that means the vision prescription, all right? Um, now, it, rep it represents the power required to correct refractive error. Remember that the patient goes through the manifest refraction and then they are given the prescription. This prescription is then translated into lenses, right? All, whether that be spectacle lenses or contact lenses, this prescription is used to correct refractive error, all right? Now, it's, it's determined by the manifest refraction and here's what it looks like, right? This is a typical prescription. Now, by the end of this course, you're gonna be an expert on this. All right. However, this prescription, which whenever we're, we're talking about lenses and stuff, we're going to start talking about the powers of lenses. This prescription refers specifically to the power. So to get used to seeing F, a big capital F refers to power. OK, so this is going to represent the power of the lens. All right. We determine what the refractive error is. Our lens does not have an E on it. <laughs> uh, this is going to determine what the person needs, and we are going to create a lens that has those exact numbers in it. All right, that's basically what opticians do. So, uh, first, you know, I. This is pretty self-explanatory. However, OD and OS are Latin abbreviations of what we use to 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 denote what the right and left eye are. Right. So OD is Latin, oculus dexter, meaning right. OS, oculus sinister, meaning left. And if you ever see anything with OU, that refers to oculus uterque, meaning both eyes. Get used to those, all right? Because you're gonna see those all the time. Sometimes you'll see prescriptions that literally just have an R and an L. That's fine. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. But for the most part, the convention is to use OD and OS. So get used to seeing that. Get used to using it. That's, you know, if you're going to walk the walk, talk the talk. So you may as well be using these abbreviations. That is exactly uh, what most professionals will be using. So get used to seeing them and understanding what they are. Next, you're going to see the sphere. So these, these, the, these things here are going to be on every prescription, right? Sphere, cylinder, axis, prism, and add. All right. So the sphere refers to the primary lens power. This is a simplified way of describing it, but it's very, very useful to think of it that way. In future lectures, we're going to be able to see, I'm going to be able to give you prescriptions and you're going to be able to determine what all, what, what refractive error the person has, what their visual acuity is likely with without glasses, what types of problems they're likely going to encounter with their prescription. You will be an expert and you're going to be able to do this within seconds. We call that RX interpretation. We're going to do an entire lecture on that and you're going to be an absolute rock star by the end. Of it. But for now, just understand the parts of the prescription. So first part is a sphere that refers to what, you know, what the primary lens power is. The next one is the cylinder. So, and the cylinder and axis go hand in hand. All right. So the power of cylinder, it's the power of the cylinder and its orientation. So the cylinder must always have an axis. You can't have any kind of uh, power here without having this guy with them, all right? That's extremely important. This also denotes the amount of astigmatism that the person has in their prescription, all right? Now, notice how the right eye here has none. The SPH refers to sphere. Often, it'll just be blank. This just means there is no cylinder. So that eye does not have any astigmatism. The left eye, however, has 0 0.5 diopters of astigmatism. We're gonna talk about the minus versus the plus here in future lectures, however, uh, just remember that the cylinder has to have his buddy, the axis, with him all the time. If there's no axis, you can't, you can't produce a lens to correct this vision without the axis. All right. So the next one is the prism. Now, prism is a unique thing that is used to usually correct uh, binocular vision problems. It's used to bend light differently than what is expected in a, in a traditional setup. 
All right. Now, not every prescription is going to have prism. It's actually most won't. However, I wouldn't call prism rare per se. I'm just saying that, you know, the vast majority of your prescriptions will have nothing in here. However, whenever there is prism, it has to be incorporated in the lens. This is vital to the, the patient having proper vision and proper comfort in vision. Thing about uh, prism is that you do have to have a base direction. So it's still in diopters, but it's in prism diopters. So let's say, for example, this eye, we wanted to say it would have 1.0 diopters of, of, of diopter. Often they're gonna put a, a triangle for prism of base down prism. And we're gonna go into detail of what that means, all right? Um, so that would have to be incorporated. Absolutely, you have to have prism if it's prescribed. You can't omit it, all right? Uh, last but not least, we have add, meaning the addition, meaning extra power required. Uh, and that's the extra power needed for near vision. And this usually means presbyopia, okay? So it usually means the person requires different powers and different focal lengths. And this refers to the reading addition. Um, and whenever you see an add power, the first thing that should pop to mind is, should I be using a multifocal? Now we're gonna descri describe how this add power could be used. It doesn't have to be used in a multifocal. We can actually calculate a number of different things using the whole prescription, including the add power, uh, to go from distance glasses to near glasses to even computer glasses. There's a number of things you can do with this, which we're going to go into detail. However, uh, for the time being, just remember that add is an important part of the prescription, meaning that the person will require different powers at different focal lengths. And to tie this all in, there's a few things that we need to talk about. Uh, power in most of these parts can either be plus or minus, and that's gonna denote different things, that's what we're gonna go into detail. So it's very common to have plus or minus. The only places you don't need plus and minuses are gonna be in your axis, because that's not diopters. These are degrees, okay? Uh, and then the prism will never be a minus. So that's another one. And then add is always plus. However, you're going to always need a sign in all those other parts. Um, I did mark here a cylinder should be minus. Now cylinder will sometimes be written plus. However, we opticians always deal with minus cylinders. So you're gonna have to learn how to convert that. Uh, a process called transposition, which we are going to cover and you're gonna be an expert on it by the end of this. Uh, everything's usually in quarter diopter increments. All right, so let's just do something real quick. Um, so we're going to have 0, 0. Let's just say 0. That's plano, also called plano. Then you're going to have 0 0.25. That's the next quarter. Then 0 0.50. Then we have 0 0.75. Then we're going to have 1, and that continues. 1, 2, 5. And you get the point, right? So this is the way that it's usually done in quarter diopter increments. Sometimes you can have 8 diopters which halves all of these so you could have 0 0.125 which i usually say 0 0.13 uh and then sorry before here so that would go here in between the two you have 0 0.38 and then 0 0.88 and then and then uh the same thing repeats after the one so 0 0.13 sorry 1.13 and so on this used to happen a lot more frequently uh where optometrists would prescribe in eight diopters. Nowadays, you never see it. However, one thing to, to keep note of is that as things get more and more modern, our prescriptions, the labs that produce the prescriptions become more and more granular. They, they get really, really accurate with the powers they produce. So you will see sometimes lab sheets come out like this where uh, it's an eighth diopter. Sometimes it's even in 100th diopters, crazy stuff. However, for the, for the time being, just know that most of the prescriptions and most of the prescriptions we will use in this course will all be in quarter diopter increments, okay? Axis is always in degrees, okay? It's on a 180 degree scale. So 180, okay, is equal to zero. And then it goes all the way from one to 179 for different axes of orientation. Again, we're gonna cover all that. Uh, prism requires base direction. I just talked about that when we were going over that prism section. Uh, and add is always plus, all right? You're never gonna see a minus add. It's always more converging power. All right, so we've touched on a lot of stuff and <clears throat> I haven't really taught any of this stuff. We are just kind of touching the surface here so that when we start talking about different things, at least you have a little bit of an understanding, a base of what all this stuff means. And let's look at the significance well this is the basis the basis of everything we do all right so basically 
you know, from understanding refractive error to understanding the prescription to how it's corrected, that is the job. That is what an optician does. Now, understanding this simple stuff will make you better, right? Um, at the more challenging concepts, especially. So, you know, without understanding these basic principles, the other stuff we're going to touch on is going to be even more complicated. So get a good grasp of this, make your notes. Um, and if, it, if you're not fully, you know, comfortable with all of this, don't worry, it's going to come as time goes on as we go through the future lectures. However, just the fact that you've had kind of exposure to this now will kind of set you on the right path. All right, let's move on to the next.